Now, count on two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 Midday. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on News 2 Midday. Today is Thursday, August 29th. I'm Temple Ricky. Let's check in with the Low Country's morning meteorologist, Josh Marthers. And Josh, you're watching Hurricane Dorian. We're watching Dorian very carefully. A brand new update just coming in from the National Hurricane Center. Let's show you what's going on. A judge already denied bonds for two juvenile suspects in the case. Both also face eight counts of attempted murder. Each of those counts is for one of the eight children that were sleeping in the home on Whitehall Road during Tuesday morning shooting. Macedonia Middle was also put on lockdown because officials weren't sure where the threat was centered. Once they figured out it was Hanahan High School, they lifted the lockdown at Macedonia. Purdue Pharma is accused of marketing efforts that persuaded doctors to, subscribe, to prescribe the drug. According to the CDC, more than 400,000 people have died from opioid abuse since 1999. Last year, the state realized about 200 properties believed to be in Horry County are actually in Georgetown County. And a design chosen for the 2020 Cooper River Bridge Run. Former Marine Joe Wilhite says he worked more than 80 hours to create a design to capture the excitement of the run. The design is on posters, t-shirts, bags, and this year it will be on the medals. Hurricane Dorian is barreling towards the United States and now expected to gain strength before it gets here. The storm's path is still uncertain, but it has people on edge up and down the eastern seaboard. NBC's Kathy Park is in central Florida, where residents there are worried that they could be in the bullseye. Millions of dollars are now being pushed into not only changing the stigma around HIV and AIDS, but in Arkansas, also preventing the spread of the deadly disease. Hillary Hunt sat down with resident responsible for getting $2.5 million to go towards that goal. People living with HIV may experience fatigue, loss of appetite, sores or swelling, cough and night sweats. Now calling all heart heroes. Saturday, the Charleston American Heart Association and MUSC are teaming up to honor children and families who have been affected by heart disease right here in the Low Country. Joining us now, we have Dr. Eric Graham, Lee Dawson, and Davis Dawson here with all the event details. Hello, you guys. Hey, how Hi. are you? We have a full house in here today. So <laughs> what's the reason? What's little Davis doing with us? So Davis is actually a little heart hero himself. Um, he was born with a congenital heart defect as well as Down syndrome. At just two months old, he had his first heart surgery. And we are facing another one sometime soon, but we're working with our providers at MUSC to determine the best course of action. Well, he's definitely a little heart hero. And tell us about these surgeries. How extensive are these and how tough do these kids have to be? This is a huge deal. Sure, uh, we're here to celebrate them because they really do have to go through a lot. Um, heart malformations are actually the most common birth defect um, and affects about one out of every 100 live births. So that means about 40,000 children every year are born with heart defects. And of those, about 25% need heart surgery in the first year of life. And so although we're doing a lot of dramatic improvements in surgery and medical therapy to improve the lives of these children, there's still a lot of research needed to, to make sure we provide the best care for them. So with that research, with fundraising efforts, what are you all teaming up to do? I know there's an event on Saturday. So there's an event on Saturday and we're hoping um, just, I think just to raise awareness about um, congenital heart defects and also just to celebrate these kids and um, and their families. It, it does take a toll on the whole family. You can let them down. Yeah. Can run around. Guys, he's been running around the studio <laughs> behind the scenes. He really likes hanging out here at News 2. But what's going to happen at the event? I know there's some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, so for 20 years, actually, the American Heart Association and the NMUC have partnered to bring uh, families and the physicians and nurses and therapists and people who care for them together to celebrate these heroes. And so there'll be balloons and bubbles and uh, places for them to dress up and just see each other and hang out with the people who took care of them before and raise awareness. So it'll be a really nice day. All right, you guys, and it sounds like it's going to be a great time. Again, this is happening Saturday. You have all the details on your screen, so make sure to head out. Thank you guys so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Now, a count on two investigation. Parents are worried about a bus stop set in front of a home belonging to a registered sex offender. A North Charleston mother discovered the issue at the start of this school year. She says the school district wasn't taking her concern seriously, so she reached out to count on two investigators. News 2's Sophia Arizosa took concerns to the district and she got the problem resolved. According to a AAA study out this morning, running red lights claimed nearly 1,000 lives in 2017. 
That's a 10 year high. It says they make up 28% of crash deaths at the intersections that have a traffic signal. Victims often are not the ones who run the light. AAA suggests red light cameras can help deal with the issue. The diocese now has until September 6 to submit an order regarding that decision. They sued the church in an effort to keep the property. We're told right now they are short in about 250 homes. Administrators say the Somerville location will help them find local homes or local children. The organization hopes to expand statewide. I miss you too. Oh my goodness. A soldier surprise at an elementary school here in South Carolina. It all started with a ceremony for students with perfect attendance. That's when Titus and Chelsea Gillespie went up to get theirs. The teacher claimed that they were out, so their dad stepped in. Well, we just really wanted to surprise the kids. Uh, it's my third deployment coming home, and I wanted to do something special this time. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, a little I'm nervous, excited. but I'm excited. Timothy Gillespie surprised his son and daughter Wednesday at their school in Pickens County. He'd just come home from a nine-month deployment to Syria.